Astralis on this map, but that doesn't hold context to time limit. Recently, it hasn't been a comfortable place for Mouseports to be. Definitely why it raised an eyebrow too, but Mouseports are in that state of flux. They have been changing, growing, looking new, trying to find new ways to approach this map, positions being switched up, roles even being adjusted. So we don't know when it's going to click together here. Now would be a pretty good time as we're a minute into the pistol round and you do a pin drop. Utility for Chris J. Going to lob that over towards the B side of things. That's going to lock down Magus and Dupree towards this side of the map. Limping in a close nade. Oh, Glaze rotating on it. A flash to follow and they're going A. So up cat they barrel. Yeah, they pulled Glaive away. That's not bad, but oh. Device is still there. And Device, yeah. well, that shot's going to sting. Yeah, Frozen had a chance, but s -Attack's removed it. And now into the site, it's USPs versus Glocks. It's not a fight that favors Beamer, so he will just tuck in. Right to go short side. There's so many of them. Oh, that's intimidating. A wave of Astralis looks to crash into the A-side retake. And already has crumpled and disastered strikes for Rops. Bomb will be defused. Glaive even not needing a kit. A full 10-second defuses. Chris J are just going to hang around. And that's the end of that. Wow, not a single body dropped. Astralis clean as a whistle or a whistle. Very good start from them right there. And just to note that uh, Device getting two big frags. Maybe he wants to get out a uh, org or something a little bit early. Bring out the range. Or he can go for a lighter buy and get himself the AWP going into the first gun round. But to continue forward with what we were talking with the Mouse Sports storylines was that for the majority of the Pro League season, Carrigan was doing the lion's share of AWPing. Certain maps, Nuke CT side, for example, he wasn't picking it up. But yesterday we saw that roll shift. We had... Yeah. Carrigan locking down the long doors. We had Chris J being the mid-long AWPer and b in swing. So we didn't see Device get the AWG, but Esetag also had two kills. He'll pick it up himself. Using that over towards Pit. Device is patrolling middle with the scout, seeing if he can find any damage whatsoever. Dupree in tandem You can here. see how Dupree is just so, so perfectly baited in by the scout. Tucking in after Device called that there was a majority of action in that middle area. Mouseport's in absolutely no hurry. Bomb still T spawn long door side. Oh, heroics on that Deagle. Flash not going to do too much. Trying to bait them in with reloads and everything they can come up with. Bemis does land or have a nade rather landed upon him. Harrigan catching damage and Flack as well on long. It's S attack with an Org no less. And he is already just lining them up, chewing through anybody that comes his way. A nice little tag. A warning shot does repel Rops. It's a great gun for the job there on S attack. Just Are we starting to use the, the Org more, Chad? Have you yeah, been playing no, around really, with it? I really think the Org on the CT side, just for holding lines. Uh, Especially long side. Like that, even when they swing sight, suddenly you're viable. Yeah, it removes, you know, the necessity to always be jiggle peeking or using utility to help go for those jewels. I think the org is leveling the playing field against the AK a little bit more. Now, it's not as potent as it once was. We all know how good the org was just a year ago. As we get back underway here, the guns will come on out. Mouse Sports are looking to buy on in here. And you can see, you know, s attack scoped on in. He just feels he has that... Extra bit of confidence it is just against these pistols and the fist bumps will come on through. Now, I'm a little bit worried for Mouse here because they're a momenti snowball based team. If they don't get a, a, a round going early, I can see Astralis just absolutely hammering them. They haven't got a kill yet. If they've done nothing so far. And for a team of young guns who want to get fired up, get in. At least they've got long control. That's, that's a start, it's a step. And you do have a player up towards short. Carrigan quite quick to take territory. So he has to tag on the other side. Obviously pushed away from long this yeah. time. And Carrigan seems to catch him unawares. This tag didn't realize that maybe he could have been there that quick. And Chris J playing ahead of the smokes. Oh. Ace on this. Yeah, that's lovely. Glaive is vulnerable now. He has to tuck it to CT. He doesn't get time, Chris. Finding two frags. The two first frags found for Mouse Sports. At least for the Dutchman. A third found as well for Mr. Carrigan. Bomb taken away. Dupree and Magisk forced to accept their fate and save. It is only an MP9. Could upgrade if anyone gets too inquisitive towards the doors. Doesn't seem to be the intention just yet. Well, this is that uh, lockdown you were talking about there, Alex. So as soon as those frags come in, Dupree and Magus have no way back in in a 5-on-2 situation. Looking where the money's at right now. The $1,400 loss bonus coming through for Astralis into round number four. These saved guns mean the world. Money will trickle on up for Magus. He'll be able to drop a rifle. Dupree will be able to do the same and they should be able to get another buy going. Something that's really impressed me uh, in that interview with Zonic was just, or something for that perhaps my romanticized brain likes to hold on to, is just the, the, the idea of Esatag's 
young hunger translating to some of these old guard that perhaps got a little jaded to the success. Sure. I think Esetag coming back in and being just happy to be playing at such a level and, and motivated to do so. I, I imagine just from a human standpoint, that's going to have translated to the other four to some capacity. It inspires you to, to want to learn and keep going forward, right? When you see someone else with that hunger. Oh, I'm sure it reminds them of when they were in that position themselves, I'm sure, right. invigorating. Yes, that's the right word. Button. Thank you, Lauren Pansy Ooh. Scott. Device has opened up the account for round four. Well, it looks like they wanted to get that long control, but this time they're up for the fight. Glaives it made it down towards pit, and there's Dupree in support. Chris J being lost is a bit of a problem. He was great previously, and Glaive oh. gets played in. Yes, they removed Esetag. The gap in the smoke will reveal Beamus, but he finds the kill. So down to a 3v2. Kind of just been neutered. Oh, device, the dream shatterer. I started to have faith after Beam has found something. A 2v4 turning into a 2v3 felt winnable. Suddenly, Magisk is about to ruin all of his hopes and dreams as wow. Beam stares at the floor, doing his routine floor inspection. How's it looking? Uh, I'm Actually, afraid it's a, it's a little messy. You can see all these, like... I have a really yeah. big detail to point out from uh, round four going into round five. One. When Dupree was close mid-doors with the MP9, the bomb went off and one of his teammates' rifles got blown through spawn out so he could pick it up, which meant he came through with an M4 instead of an MP9, oh. and then he was the individual with enough residual cash to drop device the AWP that found the opening up mid. So a bit of uh, luck coming into his side there to recover that weapon. Physics. Yeah, but it really helped out Strauss' buy going into round four, and now looking at round five, the guns will be out on both sides. Chris is picking up the big green. Rock and roll. Let's get into it. This is the man we thought who was going to be doing the primary orping as soon as we saw the Woxic Beamass change come on through. Yeah. That wasn't the case. It looks like they've started trending in that direction, understanding maybe they need someone a little bit more potent on that rifle. I just wonder how much time he's practically had here. Oh, Dupree yeah. has been put in the hours. He looks sharp again today. That's an AWP M4 one-on-one -on -one that Dupree has one-handedly. That only backs up the point that he is sharp as a knife. And I'm talking one of those pretentious ones that Instagram tries to sell you. 300 smackers and it's all detailed and engraved. That's I how sharp he is. Yeah, I bet very... you have. It comes with a block, Lauren. A sharpening block. A nice shun knife. A shun or something, yeah. Was it uh, the, the German brand? I'm just telling you. A whole lot of conversation about it. Look at this kind of playback towards long here. We obviously had the presence towards the double doors at the start from the York, but device always so mobile. I've missed that about yeah, him. Yeah, baby. Wow. Does CT, does, CT does two orping. It's an art form from Device, he wrote the book on it, and he will repeat, nothing there. Nate could find Beamus, it's actually deeper into Frozen's toes and tags him down, but it's still competitive round, despite the early damage done to Mouse Sports. They've got 30 seconds, this is quite an obstacle to overcome. Esetag's Jiggle does confirm that Beamus and the bomb are still present. He needs that frag, and Beamus has found it. Device has to tuck in now, he's low, and they have got low time. Double smoke, they will get across. I think we've got a round here, Lauren. Oh, and that's Device. Oh, stopped. dear. Oh, wait, that's the bomb. Okay, look at the time. Nine seconds. Another tag comes in. And Device is creeping up on this. Frozen's on the bomb side. He's got a plan now. He can't stop it. And Device beheads them. Comfortable from Device, even the most pressured scenarios. He still looks so collected. And now 4 1. Hi, guys. We're going to be jumping into Skybox here for a moment yeah. just to show you that uh, physics with the. M4, check it out. Bomb goes off, gets blown all the way across. Dupree picks it up. Freebie <laughs> upgrade. Away you go. Life's looking pretty good for Dupree right now. Yeah, you take those. Bit of uh, intervention from the higher powers of Counter-Strike. Gaben smiling upon Dupree on this Have fine Thursday, oh. Sunday. What day is it today? Saturday, Saturday, today. I have no idea. Thursday, Sunday. Thursday. Tomorrow we've got our, uh, our grand final special coming on through. Grand final special. Yeah, but uh, there's, there's all these specials at the moment. Halloween specials. Oh, oh I, I wish we did specials. Yeah, well, we could. Can we, we do some outfits and Why stuff we, Halloween? We can do a Halloween special. I remember, like, oh, the Sunday Cartoon Network, whatever they were oh called. Oh, my gosh. It, the presenters would have different themes. I could wear a pumpkin outfit. Good type of specials. Maybe we could make up for all the holidays we missed in the year. We could do, like, during New York, we could do, like, an Easter special. Yeah. Uh, Halloween mean, special. Yeah. What other specials? I, really, I just want to do Halloween because we can really dress up for it. And I feel like we could, you know, the makeup artist, she can just... And Germany's super into this whole love costume, costume thing. I yeah. swear, I've never that seen... really leans into it. So many costume shops in one country. Today's the that's Unity true. special. What now? The Unity special. Unity. Or German Unity Day. Oh, that's right, today. Yeah. Yeah, everything's closed. Germany closed, like, actually in shut... In celebration, 
Everything shut down shuts everything. down on Sundays, and now they've shut down on Saturdays. Sometimes things are closed on Mondays. So basically, Germany <laughs> is weird. If we have uh, if we have some suggestions coming in from people at home for specials that we could run during IEM New York, uh, hit us up. Hashtag ESL Pro League, I guess, is the best place for us to look. That's ESL, in case you're wondering how to spell it. That's ESL. Thank you. Now, Dupree with uh, some eco frags and Device doing the same. It was a nice round that we skipped through. And uh, nothing really to report other than Device continuing to add to his KDs on 9 and 1 at the moment. That's pretty spicy. And Lauren, you checked in with the Mouse Sports absence of fragging. There isn't that much more to report, unfortunately, so far. It's time to see if the individuals can wake up, because it's about time. I mean, if this starts getting away from them, if we start seeing seven, eight already, yes, attack does go down. First blood drawn. This is the best start we've seen from Mouse in a while. That's very bold. They just barreled through middle, straight up short. We saw Carrigan get away with it kind of oh. before, but Device's aggression doesn't really stop. But look how isolated Magisk is. He's now going to have potentially two players through middle, one through tunnels until Chris J gets there, and then you've got more. He needs to somehow stay alive, and he's done very well with the first step. Yeah, that nade into the rocks chunked him heavy. Bemis is on the flank. Magisk aware of it. He's got so many targets from multiple directions. Carrigan is the one to swing through the doors, and that could be the lockout. Device advancing as is Glaive. Looks like they want to contest, at least initially. Carrigan could get caught here. He's so low. The swing into the AWP is favorable, and a third found for Carrigan. Uh, well, you know what that means. Glaive can be opting for the save here. And grab Device's AWP, carry that through. And Mouse Sports, they'll get another one on the board here. So scoreline will tick on up to 5-2. to two. Isolating that mid to B split was good stuff, but you can see on the radar on your top left where all the kills went down. We've obviously have one towards CT, a kill on to device towards Cat, opening frag towards Long against that of Mouse Sports. So with this, the buy will be fine for Astralis, not too many dramas to worry about. Magus has 5k, they're going to have the loss bonus coming on through of 1400. Orp will be able to be dropped across, so they will be able to buy what they need. Esetag and Dupree are more towards the bottom of the barrel in regards to the amount they can invest in utility, but we can see them offer Famuses instead of M4s. That'll give them a little bit of more money to work with. This frag was the one that determined the save, so shout out to Carrigan for winning that one. Looks like he, Chris is looking after his gut bacteria, a healthy yogurt there for his fragging session. Got to look out to your gut. Flora and fauna down there. Flora and the fauna. And from Flora to Pansy, we do have a round ahead of us, Lauren. Frozen and Beamus leaning towards the long fight. No one's giving Device anything in middle. You have to wait for the smoke to expire because he can play around the cusp of it. Be a little bit cheeky. Should be dissipating now. Cost drink and fully blind, by the way. Device just gets the timing so, so right. You, You'll take that one. You, you will take those ones. Um, and what's been working for Mousewatch was that fast pressure up cat. We've seen it kind of garner them these two rounds, but this time leaning into it a little bit later. But they do have the bomb there, they do have BMAS there, and it looks like Chris J leading the charge on this. But Device, ever present, always around the map. We've got Glaive in CT spawn. He can assist when these nades come on through. Can dip on back up, force his Molotov out, and that'll hold the teaser at bay. Bimas will have to respect this. There's seven seconds that are going to be bought off of the clock, but also off of the smoke that they've just thrown. So now that that only will have half its lifespan remaining, the mouse just want to commit on this. Chris is looking for something, isn't he? Up and above we look. Device is there. Glaive's there as well. Nest tag going to keep long safe. So they feel very secure in these peaks. Chris J gets the tag. Flash comes in. The hit's really being hindered. Glaive still has the smoke to put into play. Makes it more uncomfortable now. Yeah, and Chris is actually just holding that plant. A no-scope. Very attempt. Crazy attempt. And Device still manages to find one. Members of Mouse gathered around the smoke, but as it fades, Device still patrols. They still have five players alive, Lauren. Frozen finds Dupree, removing them. Oh, Spike Beast, he needed that, but Beamass now mobile. Almost converts towards Magus because the last player is Rops. No smokes, nothing, aside from the guns in their hands to take him down, and that's all they needed. Diffuse to come in, and the play back from Astralis was very poised as ever. Yeah, Device just having such conviction. I mean, he, he had the process of elimination, but to find that frag, this is the first he found, by the way. Lauren's right, completely cut, just nonsense timing as the flash comes in. This is Fully the blind. second I'm referring Fully to. Smokes. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, an uncharacteristic miss, but regardless, the damage inflicted, and Magis just finding the double necessary to close things out. That's round, uh, where are we? Eight concluded. 
Don't know why I try and do the, the addition when it is right in front of me as well. But regardless, a scout for Chris J. It's not the ideal buyer. Galil sacrifice for Bemis as well. Let's see if they've got a different plan up the sleeve of Carrigan. Not forgetting that this is Mouseport's pick, despite them having statistics unfavorable. Keep your However, eyes, keep your eyes on Rops. Last time around, he was the highest rated player within the server. He had uh, 26 kills right now, sitting with one to his name. So we want to see him get activated. One and seven. Second highest rated player in the tournament needs to come online. This attack loves this. Knows they've got to check that blue bin corner. He's almost guaranteed the 50 50 coin toss. There's more. He's Rops out of another. Just a brick wall, isn't he? He's got device now helping him out even more. Gets tagged for it, but Dupree. Picking up that double up, leaving these last two alive. I, where do you take this? Yeah, I mean, Rosen's lost there. He can't. Do he's much. cooked. Like he can't go back to the doors. He's lost his teammate as well. The double orbs are out and connecting. Astralis are making a very strong case. A bit of a punishment. A bit of a, a message back to Carrigan saying, "You picked us too. Oh dear. You picked us too just because you beat us on it before." <laughs> Petulant child. There must have been a big thought that Astralis would just default over towards Nuke, right? But the fact that Astralis have picked Inferno is a real punish against Mouse. And I know Astralis' results on Inferno have looked a little bit up and down, but you just have to go back to their history on that map. One of the best to ever do it. And uh, I think that their play style matching up against the way that Mouse sports like to approach their T side could be a bit of a left right good night. A 2 0 could be on the cards unless Mouse can start mounting at least something a little bit more exciting here on Dust 2. Now that these double orps are out, you can see. Astralis will play more spawn-based. And you already have noted that. It's on the first gun round. Dupree's gone towards long. Normally the mid slash B defender. He's used his spawn to take the AWP towards long. Going to get the absolute most now out of this double AWP setup. He hit that. Chris took a nice shot into the shin of Device. I still feel like Chris J will always be like the king of the unorthodox for me. Any weird weapon, he will master it. And I'm not saying he's want the PP buys, and he does tag off tag. Dupree. It's a little unfortunate there. The orbs are still viable, but he's doing so well at pushing them away. Another chance and the miss there. Oh, this is frustrating. He really had an opportunity. It was a very small, a very narrow window, but there was a chance there to have found a full HPS attack in the back of the head. Now Bomb will go down. If only he could have taken a couple more down. I like the angle from Frozen. There will be a problem, though. If Long is lost, Esther Tag's already walking up against that close wall. Chris J doesn't have the info. Dupree to support. He does confirm the shot at least. Too Long is the call. Three tags. He has done his work. The Deagles need to come online now, but Esther Tag is crispy as shop. He's warmed up. Another tag, but no frag. How are they still standing? Rops and Bemas. I can't do anything. That angle's useless to him. He might be able to find one. No device has done it. Bemas overwhelmed. Pause bullets in, and as said, for me, heartbreak. <laughs> Chris J tags up three players. God, I know it's not easy to articulate, but the way in which Astralis are retaking this A site makes it look very easy. They're just all willing to juke out from that CT ramp. It just seems very, very horrible. Like the, the after plan for Mouseports has felt awkward every time, and I don't think that's because of their decisions. Yeah, I, I think here, and, and what I've been noticing with Astralis a bit more recently is they're happier to take a lot more fights. Like they're staunching on their opponents, right? They're like, yeah, we were the best in the team in the world once upon a time. We have some fantastic individuals and they're happier to take fights. And in a round like that, where so much damage was done, it was so threatening against Astralis, they walk away with all five surviving, right? And that's the craziest thing. So we're now 10 rounds into play, going into round number 11, scoreline eight to two in favor of Astralis. They're running away with this one. Mouseports really need to get something going. Five on the half wouldn't be too bad. With that fast oh flash middle, God. it looked like they were trying to posture for that fast play towards Cat. It wasn't to be. Device already dealt with Carrigan. The trade came out from Frozen, who was top mid. But B was going to be the end desire, <laughs> but Dupree's on it. These orbs are just ridiculous in these guys' hands. Now Dupree, again, still patrolling, still very cognizant that someone could be crossing back over. And it means that Esatag is going to have to turn into the turret mode towards A. Bomb gets passed back. Chris J. Go on, Esatag. Bold in look, but it's Esatag who is being just the immovable object. Yeah, catches another. Rops trying to be the hero, nearly adjusted in time. Could have made that a 1v1, could have got my... Lungs a little empty, but not to be today. Instead, another rope for Device. We'll be spending about seven grand into this one. It is the first time out of our lower bracket final here. Astralis definitely got a choke and stranglehold over the Mouse Sports T side. And this was my this was my fear. By picking it, of course, the side choice goes to Astralis. It means the Mouse Sports will have to throw down the gauntlet on the T side of a map that Astralis were one of those to forge such a path into the dominance that the CT double AWP can bring so oh, long ago. In yeah. fact, Carrigan was even in the roster when they were started doing that. That's a total of 17 kills, I believe, over mm -hmm. 11 rounds. Am I doing the maths you right? Oh, yeah. Well, five plus five. 
plus four plus three. Yeah, he's That's right. right. I was yeah. just explaining how my brain works. All right, okay. Uh. So, what's that? Like an average of 0 0.6 kills a round? I mean, take into account the first two, they literally didn't get a single kill. So it... It's been a bit rough. It has been a bit Even rough. Even the bomb has spawned, though, then that's a different strategy. They'll be doing that at this point, point in time. Sonic, but what are my maths is terrible. Why am I trying to do maths on there? You've made a terrible error. Yeah. You keep talking about it. Alex had already moved on. He'd he's set you up. He's he'd helped you out. Stay away from the maths. Just stay into the orbs. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just find something else. But with that bomb at spawn, it's making me anxious. I'm sure it's intentional. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> They've uh, gone for a three-man B lean here, so this is going to come into play if we do see Mouse go for a late B split. You can see tucked in towards window is Glaive. He's the spoiler, not normally over towards this side of things. Baiting for him will be Magus from the doors. And, and what's important here is that Dupree is able to continue to contest towards tunnels. I, I'd say if they throw out that limp smoke, that lurk smoke that we always talk about, Dupree would change places with Magus, get the rifle close, get the orb towards mid, but it's not to be. God, this attack's brave. He wants this jewel. He wants it ready. He's raring to go. Frozen, this is left eye now if he tugs in close. Standing his ground. Bomb still top of middle. Does feel like an A finish. Laven Magis pushing for info middle. Chris J at the moment obscured by the smoke. Rob's trying to sell something B. Dupree dribble smoke responds with an incendiary. The middle fight still continues. 30 seconds, they need to make a decision now, and now blood is drawn. Carrigan gone, Bemis oh. meets his demise as well, and they're fumbling this one. Mousepot's just stuck in limbo. No clear intention, and absolutely no chance. Glaive's already turning the noose. He's flanking, he's calling B. Magic tucks in. Dupree pulls the trigger onto one. Chris J with only a scout trying to entry frag, and of course he does, Chris J. He won't have a chance onto the second. He takes down Magic, but finished off. And Astralis are looking significantly poised in this first map. All right, let me work this out. 19 <laughs> divided by Stop. 12, 1.583 recurring. So one and a half kills around is uh, what mouse sports are mustering at this stage. Um, Green, how are you feeling about this? You think we might be going home soon? Green? 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 Rush? Wow. <laughs> He did play some Counter-Strike with us yesterday. Was I'm just saying, he went to bed probably 45 minutes later than he, his bedtime. Oh. Time. I'm sorry, Chad. Yeah. Told him that 45 minutes late. 45 minutes. I mean, like he said, I've got to go to bed, and then he was sitting here socializing on Teams <laughs> for another 45 minutes. Okay, like, well, maybe that's why he's not talking. Yeah, yeah he's probably tired. I mean, sluggish. He needs his nine and a half hours. Okay, well, uh, oh. Hello? Oh! Yo! What's going on in there, Green? Uh, you know, I'm just chilling out, just being a bit lazy today. I thought I'd try to reach for the button, but I was like, ah, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, all fine. Chris J's got a scout, though, and the device takes Go him on. down. Go on. Go on. Oh, all right, let's do it. Um, <laughs> if I have to. You know, they're all grouped up towards B side here. I don't think it's going to be a full B side attack. Maybe trying to. They don't have any smoke, so this is just going to be rough. I think they're just going to waste a bit of time. But the Deagles, Deagles are potent, as Chad would say. Dupree missing a big one. Carrigan might try and punish it. And he actually does. That's pretty big. Glaive is here the whole time, though, so I'm not sure why he um, wasn't helping out his poor buddy over there. But they are going to all run to Magisk here. He's got the AUG, and I think this is a stellar weapon on the CT side. So I <laughs> you absolutely know? Yeah, might. look, guys, if you're on a CT side, you want to be picking up an AUG. I'm here Australia. we go. I'm going back there. Hop. <laughs> Wheel him out. Bring, bring old Rush in the alley. Rush, can, can I, can like, try and observe Jensen? with my mouth? Sure. Okay, so I think we want... What's Glaive? He's five, so we're fine for now. Uh, two. And now... Two's good. Eight. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. I like this. The side. It's two is back up. Ooh, ooh, two's back up. Five, quickly. Ooh, good call, good call. Get some damage. Two. Give me two, oh. give me two. Two, two now. It's gonna if be if he goes down, give me Carrigan. Ooh. I'll get six for you. Thank I you, got bro. a backup Thank player you. for you. Bomb going down. That's massive. Yeah, stay though. on him. Oh! oh! Okay. All right, cut away there, but I saw the jump no, shot respect. coming in. Big respect. The big instinct respect. started coming out. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, gosh, that sounded like countdown. Oh, God, observing's actually about? really stressful. Uh, oh, yo, yo. The worst <laughs> thing, Alex, is when they almost get the kill, but don't get the kill. That's yeah, the worst. Yeah, like when Glaive like, shot him thing. through the doors, if he didn't get it, and you like, do I cut away? Exactly. When... It's like, now that fight still exists, you yeah, know? I mean, and you just want fights to be done, yeah. nice, crisp, clean, move on to the next. I guess that's kind of nice with Astralis right now, Rush, because they are just 
Oh, yeah, 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 I like this. <laughs> yeah, I like this. This is great. All right, well, if we're going to do our jobs, you do yours. Double or triple in the total in the server. A lot of early util being deployed, and the Carrigan and Beamus straight up short. Carrigan limping at 47. Util deployed. That's a tea smoke. Yeah, they do it so that they can get stairs control. The CTs have no information, and to flash back in around that corner isn't the most easy to pull off on the fly. Might need something a little bit more choreographed from Australians if they want to take that territory back. The bomb on Chris J still within T spawn. Cool. You can see how awkward this is. First attack, eventually able to convert. Pimas will take him down. Magus goes down towards long pressure. Here we on go. Glaive in sight right now. Yeah. Glaive is, is feeling very surrounded, very alone, and Device has to be methodical in approach. Nice work from Glaive. Dice oh. lay one towards long, but overwhelmed. Beamass cracks into the site. Just, I mean, Device... You should go for it. Yeah, there's nothing really stopping him, apart from Rops. So Mouse wants to get one back on the board. Yeah, finally. So 11 to 3 now, going into the final round of the first half. Australians are either poised to take us into 12-3, or we could be seeing Mouse Sports battle back with another late resurgence. That tends to be the way they like to do things. And get 11-4. Now they get 11-4, go into the second half, they're able to grab Pistol. I believe Zonic was the man who said that 11-4 scoreline is the most misleading in Counter-Strike, because all it takes is that Pistol with those conversions, the first gun round, and then, well, Bob's your uncle, we're back on track. Timeout will be called from Australians, the first one here on Dust 2. For the Danes. Won't be rocking the double orb set up into the last round of the first half. Just device on the big green. Mega still with the org. Three M4s out for Dupree, Glaive, and Essatag. Diffuse kits are plenty. Utility looking fantastic. On the other side of things, Mal's have a full buy as well. See if they go for that short control smoke once more. If they can uh, grab that information as they did. You saw the pressure that applied for the split. Kills coming in towards long, kills coming in towards short, and uh, as easy as that. Looks somewhat similar, doesn't it? The fast flashes, oh. the control coming through. Carrigan gets hindered by the Molotov this time. Looks landed. Chad, this is the kind of Counter-Strike I can't do, but I really am enjoying watching Essatang and Glaive pull off. It's just hanging around close quarters. Okay, but that's fine. They force Glaive off, but Essatang, he's been having a lot of fun just standing here. He plays around the smoke, he plays around the box. Going in. And he's actually been flashed in. Bemus is not ready. He's got the first. Trade from Carrigan is imminent, but oh, not is he right. There it is. Head found, four on four. And this is the only thing that's really been working for the T side as well. Mouse sports, most of their rounds have come off this kind of like quick pressure towards Cat. Some sort of like nice trades going in, but you can see information being taken back towards A long as well. Smokes through towards middle. Two of them. Or am I going mad? Doesn't really matter when Dupree does this. That's so comfortable. Oh, okay. Chris Jay, he jumps. He's still safe. Didn't hit the shot. Mage found Rups. Ah, uh, the Chris J1v4, uh, Lauren. It's a, it's a delectable it's treat. Mm, please take me through it. Well, he hits Glaive on the second shot. Uh, now. Oh, damn. Yeah, of course. And then he gets up on short. And this is where the story really gets good because uh, it actually involves Device. Now, Device walks up and the Molly actually gets extinguished, which gets Chris J a little further into the site. He actually is considering short as well. Dupree, another fantastic shot from Chris J. This is what I'm telling you. Then he drops the smoke and plants. And this is where things get really quite juicy. Magisk and Device were left in a one versus two. And they were they're still pretty confident. But Chris, he removes some of that confidence with this nice repositioning. He actually catches Device oh. on the jump up and then hits the flick. Not quite, but it was actually the second oh. shot. Oh, never mind. I nice love try. That love story, that. Though. Great shots from Chris J. Shout Oof. out to him. It is 12 to 3, though. My goodness, of Australis wide eyed and bushy tailed tonight. They're ready to finish this one quick. We'll be back after a quick break.
So Mouse Sports map pick of just two. The Danes managed a total of 13 out of 15 opening duels. Looking absolutely phenomenal. Device went 6 and 0. Oh. That uh, I think that paints the picture here. It I think it's a very does. clear description, and it looks like Astralis have a clear plan in mind. Plenty of utility to put into place. Yeah, I mean, my goodness. To be winning 13 of potential 15. Opening, sorry, let me let me frame it even better. Of the st leaving spawn 15 times, finding the first kill 13 times, that is absurd. Now, Esetag is kind of a bit of a VIP here. He's got a lot of the util, as his device. They've got two smokes for the cross here. And Dupree and Glaive are actually, oh, that's so naughty, we missed it. But Rob's went pushing. He pushed all the way through tunnels, and he's been met by Dupree. That's forced Frozen off of the A site, or at least through middle. And so now there's three at the moment, anticipating action on long. But look what's happened. That one frag has forced Mouse Sports into a defensive stance, and now Astralis can deploy their utility. There's that util coming through. Chris J on the other side of things. Going to be very aware of what could be coming his way. The only one with a kit, got to be cautious. And they're all around this. There's no subtlety anymore. They're, they're, they're quite loud, and they're quite... Oh, oh, oh. Up for the fight? That was a little awkward, but that one lands cleanly. Bemis at least going to take down Magisk, but that one is beautiful. Needs another, though. Going to try and dip down towards CT, but he's got device to deal with. Yeah, and he's got a P250 as well. It's a perfect weapon for the job. Chris J continuing. Where Bemis left off, beaming with the USP. Dupree feeling himself. He's actually taking this fight and winning it. Frozen goes down through just sheer refusal to quit from Dupree's taps. There is more. Chris J. Oh. Clean into the first. He needs Glaive now and flying high into the sky. He descends dead. Glaive does find the necessary final frag, and that's really going to seal the deal of Dust 2. Yeah. Just to add to that lovely stat, we started with keep in mind that Astralis generally convert uh, after getting the first kill 78% of the time. So, as said. More so this time. Yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> yeah. That stat is going to skyrocket. Uh, <laughs> Oh, nice shots from Bemis and Chris, though. You can see everyone nice. switched. I just, just feel like the general level after all of this, locking all of the pro players to their desks and saying, you can't leave the house, you've got to play Counter-Strike for nine months. It turns out everyone got good. They can frag. Uh, Chris J, still, still trying to do some work here towards long. Does have the scout and the deagle. Last time around, he got those three <laughs> big tags and then couldn't get anything for it. Dupree going to just step forward. Yeah, this is starting to get unfun now for the CTs. I mean, I'm sure it's been that way for a while, if I'm honest. <laughs> the first know, half I don't think, Yeah, I don't think it would be starting at round 17, touche. Boulevard, touche. 
Yeah, this one is going to look very difficult for Mouse to get back. Okay, into. getting hit by the nade is one thing. Dead. Sprayed as well through the smoke is another. Using the car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Finding anything in anyone. It's poor old Frozen. He's an armored deagle and he is dead. Or at least caught the first bullet from Glaive. Bouncy UMP. I'm sure the second is just soon to follow. Esfetag steals it from his leader. Well, I understand what Astralis is doing because if you just are joining us, you won't realize that whoever wins this matchup has to play Heroic this evening. Wow. Now, that matchup will be going down at 9 p.m. But if Astralis win quicker, they get a longer break. So maybe they're just thinking, yeah, we'll get this one done. We'll get it out of the way really, really quick. Yep. We'll give ourselves more breathing room and go have some Relax. dinner. Astralis versus Heroic, first heroic though. Yeah, and this that's for a warm up. Mm. It's the rematch as well from uh, the opening here stages as Tobias takes down Frozen. They're making quite a statement. If I'm Heroic and I'm watching this game, I'm. Just double checking my notes, making sure the uh They're going, wait, we we definitely banned Dust 2 first, right, guys? <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. We don't, we don't play it, that's all right. Gosh, okay, that's gonna be quite the game. And that'll be brought to you by Trace Dennis Sorrentis, Hugo Byron, and Harry Russell. For now, this is just the end of our first map here. Carrigan going for some long range MP9. -ing. That is the bomb. Maybe device could get overwhelmed. It seems his tag has been converted by Magnus. Can drops nice eagle work up close. If he finds device here, this could translate for Beamers. Rops is only working with a scrap of Eldon B. They're taking the bomb A, so this one does reach a rather slow and calculated end. Can I start painting a bit of a picture for Inferno and why we've got the woes again for everybody at home? Because I'm intrigued because I thought, you know, historically, yes, Astralis were good, but Inferno hasn't been all tickety-boo. It's just been a little bit off for them. Right, okay. You know, it hasn't looked as clean as what it once did, and that's because everybody's gotten so good with their utility usage uh, on the map, especially over towards Banana. That will be map number two. That is Astralis' pick. They opted not to go into Nuke, which is the safe call. Rops will go down. BMAS should be following very shortly. Uh, and Inferno, one of the notes we had was Mouse Spot's having a very, very proficient T side. We've seen it in three occasions. We saw it yesterday against Big. They needed to do so against Ents when they got across the line in that lower bracket matchup. And then they had this crazy almost comeback against Na'Vi where they just kept posting round after round. I think Astralis approached their CT side a little bit more differently than what two of those three teams did, and that was not play for any map control. So there is going to be an actual battle going down for Banana. We might actually see some fights and frags going on, and maybe not so many save rounds. <laughs> but we are just one round away right now, and I think this will be quick. And I'm glad to see Astralis coming up to play, because if we do get Heroic versus Astralis later in the day, uh, there's been some, some tweets that have been going on recently, so there's, there's a some bit of drama. hurt feelings out there on either side of things, and I would love to see a rematch. I just want to see them duking it out on the server. Yeah. Let's not use our words, let's use our bullets. Yeah, I, I, I'm really excited to see if Heroic can bounce back from their loss yesterday to Na'Vi as well. They were handed their asses to them on a silver platter. Electronic and Simple just doing those Career devious best. things, isn't it? Yeesh. 1.85. Happy birthday, Simple. Have yeah. my best 23, by the way. Simple is 23 years of age. Imagine how many more years of him just continuing to master his craft we get to enjoy as a viewer. For now, a slow and steady finish. Astralis looking to pull these teeth precisely. Five remaining in the mouse sport's mouth. I don't know how many teeth mice have, to be honest. I imagine it's quite a few. I'm going to look that up. Yeah, Chad, let's all have a ballpark guess. Teeth in a mouse's mouth. What do you think? Lauren, just give me the number. You can't think about it. 16. 14. Um, did you just say the number ruined the game? I, no, I haven't looked oh, it up yet. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to say more, like 30. 30? All right, I'm Googling now. Like little teeth, but lots of them. Like a little this alligator. The number are only for one side of the mouth. They should be doubled to determine the total number of teeth. This means that mice and rats have a total of 18 teeth. 18? Or, yeah, 18. Nice, Chad. Congratulations. Closer, Chad. Well done. Uh, Carrigan's flanking, but I don't know how well this is going to go. The molar of this operation. <laughs> oh, gosh. Where are the canines? Are they out yet? Oh, the canines are still alive, and Demus oh. is the last canine. Oh. Okay, he's gone. Yeah, this one is done, and dust toot. Let's get out of here. 16-3. Uh, we'll wrap that up. We'll get out of here. We'll be back to break it down. To set the scene is a very happy Danish Astralis. A 1-0 away from a rematch against the Roman.